And written offering, we don't we have this place and that place because of the offering of you saints and those who want to give back online. We have a lot of people following ministry. You can do that online. Um, speaking of, if you want to bear the expense of our Minnesota trip in June, you can do that as well, okay? Help recoup those expenses. So I'm gonna, we're going to go back and minister to the saints back in Minnesota and see Christus family and so forth. We do that each year, the Lord, with the Lord permit. So, all right, <clears throat> let's get into our study. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, we're going verse by verse through our Apostle Paul's book of 2 Thessalonians. Um, we left off in verse number 8. Uh, we've been seeing the last few weeks this issue of this man of sin, son of perdition, commonly known as the Antichrist. Uh, I believe he's, he's in the world right now. He's on the earth. Uh, no one knows who he is. You've been seeing the spirit of this ultimate Antichrist uh, at work. Even in our dispensation of grace, Paul says, uh, look with me if you will. Let's read a few verses and have a word of prayer. Look at verse number uh, 5. 2 Thessalonians 2, 5. Remember ye not that when I was with, yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery, <clears throat> for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time this morning. Thank you, Father, that we can come to you, Father, on the basis of the shed blood of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this privilege of prayer, Father. Thank you for the fellowship and the mystery, the, the, the fellowship with your Son and the gospel of grace. We ask as we study out our apostle, your apostle to us, Paul's uh, doctrine concerning uh, these things in 2 Thessalonians, that you give us good insight and understanding and wisdom, and that it be to our, <clears throat> to our edification and to your glory. We thank you for these things in Christ's name. Amen. So today we're going to look at the working of Satan. Look with me, if you will. <clears throat> Look with me, if you will, at verse number 6. And now ye know. So they know what's holding back the full manifestation of this man of sin, son of perdition. He will not be revealed before the dispensation of grace ends. Although he may be on earth, and I believe he is, and you can see the spirit of that, that, that Antichrist spirit is one that opposes what God is doing in the Middle East with that land and with the nation of Israel. And ultimately, he's been constantly doing that, that, that spirit of that Antichrist has been working even during the dispensation of grace, but not in its fullness. Once the body of Christ is gone, look at verse 6, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, he has a time. Four, further explanation, verse 7, the mystery of iniquity. Uh, that, that, that mystery, uh, that, that, that secret of how this, ma this will manifest, the mystery of iniquity, this oppo opposing God's truth, it doth already work, even in the dispensation of grace. Look at verse number 7. Only he who now letteth, we've gone through those verses about it being the, the one new man, the body of Christ, will let or hinder, that word letteth or let means to hinder, Shall let, uh, will let until he be taken out of the way. And we went through the mystery of godliness that the last thing's going to happen is God's going to take the body of Christ out of this world. You can see the stage being set in the Middle East. There's terrorist attacks everywhere. But the focus, particularly on the Middle East, is the issue in the prophetic program, that land that God promised to the nation of Israel. Not even so, many, so much the people, it's the land. Because most of that land is occupied by Muslims today. But it's still the land that God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's a battle over that land. Satan desires that land, but God promised that to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the nation of Israel. And one day he will give that to them when the Lord Jesus Christ returns in his second coming to set up his kingdom on earth. <clears throat> Look at verse number 8. So after the body of Christ leaves, this, this dispensation of grace will end with the rapture of the church. He's going to take us up. We went over that last week. It says, and then shall that wicked, this man is so wicked, he is the personification of wicked that he's called wicked. The Lord Jesus Christ is called the Holy One. He's so holy, the Bible calls him that Holy One, that Righteous One. Well, this man is so wicked, he is so opposing to what God is doing in the earth over there, in the Middle East in particular, that God just calls him that wicked. He's going to be revealed. The people on earth, the little flock of God, that little flock of the nation of Israel, 
the Spirit of God will give them understanding of who this man is. Whereas we can kind of see his spirit at work. Uh, could it be that guy? Could it be that guy? You know, everybody's trying to pick, figure out who the Antichrist. Well, the little flock, by the Spirit of God and the Word of God, will recognize this man. We'll see more about that, okay? <clears throat> Look at verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Now watch what's going to happen. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, we're going to look at that today. Because when he says the Lord's going to consume with the spirit of mouth, uh, go with me, if you will. We're going to look at a few verses. Go over to the uh, book of Matthew. Go to Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew 24. This is called the, the, Olive, the Mount of Olive Discourse, or the Olivet Discourse. This is when the Lord is going to speak about those future days, okay? The Lord Jesus Christ is giving information about something that's happening future from us. Because he's God and he can do that, okay? Well, notice here in Matthew chapter 24, I want you to read the whole entire passage on your own. By the way, you guys, during your own, during your week, you can, you can go through the entire, let's say, chapter of these, uh, well, these verses we check out. You could get familiar. You say, okay, we were in Matthew 24 today. So maybe tomorrow, read the entirety of Matthew 24. You can do that. Okay, kind of get the gist of it. I can't go through all the verses. But that's a good thing you can do each day. You can, whatever verses we go through, you can look at the entire context. That's a, that, that'll help you understand these passages. Look at Matthew 24 and verse number, start at verse number uh, 15. Now the Lord Jesus Christ is going to talk about what's going to happen in the, in the time of Jacob's trouble, that future seven year period. Notice in verse 15, now he's going to talk about the, the last half of it, the last three and a half years. Matthew 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see, they're going to see this over there in the Middle East. That, that temple's going to be up again. They're going to be able to see this information. <clears throat> see this happen. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. We talked about that. We went and saw all those verses from Daniel. He's talking about the time where that Antichrist is going to be in that temple, and he's going to set up an image to be worshipped. Okay? Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, that's in the temple. Whoso readeth, let him understand. See, you're going to have to read this under the power of the Holy Ghost in that day to understand this, okay? It takes some faith. Verse 16. Then let them which, are, which be in Judea, that's the southern territory of Israel, flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down or take anything out of his house. So he goes, oh, well, let's keep reading. Verse 18. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with the child, and to them that give suck in those days. If you're a nursing mother, it's going to be hard to travel. It's going to be hard those days. Verse 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Obviously because of cold, colder conditions, right? Neither on the Sabbath day. They're going to be forbidden to, to, to move and so forth. For then, now notice, for then shall be what? Great tribulation. When we talk about the great tribulation... Um, it's, it's, it's more associated with the last half, that last three and a half years before the Lord returns. Because Satan himself, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that Antichrist, will be ruling the Middle East and, yea, the world. I realize now how he's going to get his people throughout the world. I used to wonder, how he's going to get there? Through refugees and stuff like that. ISIS has already said that any country that allows us into their country, the refugees, we're going to infiltrate and we're going to cause havoc. Remember what happened in San Bernardino and all that stuff close to us? That stuff is going to happen everywhere. You see what happens in Brussels. There was, there was a suicide bombing just today. Some 30-something people. That's how he's going to get them out there. But his plan is to have that caliphate right in the Middle East. The, day, the days are coming. The stage is being set. Notice what he says here. Verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation. And if you listen to what the people say about what's going on, they said we've never seen anything like this ISIS, like these, these Islamic terrorists. We've never seen anything. They don't know what to do. The Lord said there'll be perplexity amongst nations. What do we do? Well, there's a way to handle them. There's a way to handle them. You have Israel handle them. You give Israel that, that, that nation over there. In what we call this over there. Saw a guy on TV. Somebody said, why doesn't these things happen in Israel's airports, in Israel's streets? They're surrounded by Muslims. 
because they don't play around. This is serious business. It's, you can see in the Bible how to deal with this stuff. And unless our leaders in the world do it the way God says, it's going to be a worldwide dominance. That's what the Antichrist wants to do. Look what it says here, verse 21. For then, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of... This is the Lord saying this. He says, just look at the entire world. There's going to be great tribulation. As such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened. It's going to literally shorten the, 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 the length of these days as far as the time of, of a day, uh, of the, the years and so forth from 365, get back down to 360. There should, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, that is that little flock of Israel, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ, these antichrists, and false prophets, and shall... Sh now here's what I want you to see. I want you all to remember this. You know what they're going to be able to do? And shall show great <coughs> signs and wonders. What type of signs and wonders? Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very what? Yeah. That means even the people who are believers on the Messiah Jesus, who have the Spirit of God, if they just looked at these signs and wonders, they could be deceived. They've got to stay in the Word. Because notice what he says, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Behold, I, Jesus, have told you what? Before it happens. He said, don't be bamboozled by this dude. Go over, if you will, to Mark chapter 13. Go to the next book, Mark. Mark chapter 13. What we're seeing on the earth, what's happening now, even in our day, it's something that has never happened in the history of mankind. Think about the use of technology. They can get their message out through Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and online, YouTube, the proper, they can get it out to the entire world. Over in Revelation it says that the entire world is going to see certain things. And I bet in the first century, how, how can the entire world see it? Because of technology, cameras, everybody has a even the poorest people can pull out their cell phone and get and record stuff. No wonder they didn't. Listen, you're seeing something that mankind has never dealt with. God, God prophesied it. The Lord Jesus, the Old Testament and during his earthly ministry. Look at Mark 13, verse 22. Mark 13, verse 22. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise. <coughs> Ultimately, the ultimate antichrist, false Christ, right? right? And shall show signs and wonders to do what? To seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus Christ is God, and he's telling his little flock way back then what's going to happen in the future, okay? Now, obviously, the dispensation of grace happened. So it did, they didn't see those days. God didn't tell us about the dispensation of grace. But when the dispensation of grace ends, God's going to pick up just like he did at the day Paul got saved. Everything going to go right back to that, okay? But I want you to see he has to tell them before. So much so that if they don't listen to his word, the Antichrist is going to deceive them too, okay? Go over to Revelation 19. <clears throat> oh, no, before you do, before you do, you're right here in, uh, go back, if you will, to Matthew chapter number 24. Before we go to Revelation, because Matthew 24 talks about the Lord's coming as well. So now you're going to see that this Antichrist is going to be the worst time the world has ever seen. And you and I living today can see that happen. We can see the stage being set, guys. There's, there's stuff all over the world. But why the Middle East is the point? Why, why? Because that's the area where God is going to dwell. The Lord Jesus is going to dwell over in the Middle East. The New Jerusalem is coming down. We're going to see that in a moment. But go back to Matthew chapter 24, <clears throat> verse 29. We didn't, we didn't uh, get down here. I want to let you see this. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, so this is at the end of it, shall the sun be darkened. I heard this guy say, he goes, this guy over in Brussels, he goes, the terrorists, he goes, yeah, we go through all of this. 
But hey, the terrorists can't stop the sun from rising. And I looked at Chris and I go, this fool don't know what's going on. They can't literally stop the sun from rising. Wait, they can block out the sun. I heard that they were, looking, they, they were, they were watching this nuclear scientist, ISIS was, recording him because they're going to kidnap him and make him get They want nuclear warfare. They want to destroy Israel. They want to destroy America. Israel, the little Satan, America, the great Satan. And if they get their hands on nuclear bombs, I could easily see that happening. Boom. If the nuclear fallout. I had a brother in the Lord. We were going to these verses back in Minnesota. He's a, he's a scientist at a, at a college there. Well, I said, son, he's a science teacher. And uh, he says, Ron, and when I look at all these passages, that could easily be the effect of nuclear warfare, the fallout, the radiation, the waters, and all. Just, he just says, that's what we don't know. But if, 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 if you get that, the sun won't shine for days if that's, that stuff gets up in the air. You won't be able to see the moon. You won't be able to see the effects of the sun. That's what he's talking about. Could be. But the point is, I just laughed when that guy said, they can't stop the sun. Oh, well, they can block it out. <clears throat> There's a Superman. Y'all know I like Superman growing up. There's one back from 87. Uh, Lex Luthor. Superman, nice, nice little, anyway, they, nice little, uh, thing going on with Superman. They're getting political in Superman. He's going to get rid of all the nuclear war, war, warheads of all the nations. He says, I'm here to get rid of all the nuclear war. So he tells all the nations to shoot their nuclear bombs out into space. And Superman, he flew out to space. He grabbed them. He put them in this big net, literally, all these. And then he hurled it to the sun. He flew it into the sun. But Lex Luthor got a piece of Superman's hair that was in a museum. It was whole, one strand of his hair was holding a thousand pounds. Lex Luthor got it, and he, using the DNA and the power of the sun, he made this this man, this creature like Superman, but using the sun, which is God's power. The you know, it was crazy. <clears throat> well, the way that Superman beat this guy, he pushed the moon into the path of the sun. He made a, 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 an eclipse, which is crazy to me. He just moved the moon. Okay. I just I look at all that stuff. That was '87, but now I didn't know that then when I watched it. But I know now. It's just some things. It's a lot of patterns and types and shadows of the Lord and so forth, you know. But let me show you something. Watch what happens here. Verse number 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. <coughs> There's going to be some, some catastrophic things. By the way, at the same time, the Lord and New Jerusalem and his saints are approaching the earth as well. So there's going to be a lot of cataclysmic events going on that's going to shake up the world as we know it. Okay? All right? Let's keep going. By the way, uh, the earth is being knocked off her axis and so forth. No wonder the days might be shortened from 365 to 360. It could happen that way. There's a lot of things that's going to go on. Okay? By the way, look at verse 29, uh, 20, uh, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. I bet it would. Uh, we were talking about it. Those sciences, he's going to start coming seven years before he gets here. So he's going to descend. Descend is a process. Now mankind might not be able to look up there and see that 1,500 mile thing coming down. But scientists can. If they're looking up there in a the telescope, you know they're always searching for something out there. They're putting the satellites out there. They don't see it coming. They don't say nothing. For a while. Of course. Of course. They hide everything. Right. But they, it's going to be something they can't hide. Sure. They mm -hmm. can't hide the fact that eventually it's going to be where everybody can see that thing coming. It's about the, it's the size of two thirds of the United States coming down. Look at verse um, uh, 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. I bet they do. They think the aliens are coming. <laughs> All those movies about aliens and this yeah. mothership and all that. It's just setting the world up for all that nonsense. Listen. It says, Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and what? Great, Great glory. Mm -hmm. And when he does that, he's going to come and destroy the Antichrist. On our way to Revelation, go to, go to uh, 2 Thessalonians 1. Go to 2 Thessalonians 1. 2 Thessalonians 1. The Lord Jesus is going to stop it. Um, I hate to be a, well, I got to tell the truth. My job is to tell the truth in God's word. 
The only person that's going to stop all that stuff that's going on with terrorism is the Lord Jesus. It's going to take him to stop it. Because about the middle of that tribulation, Satan's going to be running that thing. He's the puppet master behind it now. But he himself, his presence, very presence is going to be on this earth. Before we end this study, I'm going to show you that most saints believe that, that are taught that Satan is just on this earth. Mm -mm. He's in the heavenly place. He can go back and forth, back and forth. But when he's kicked out of heaven by the Lord, he will be right here on earth in the Middle East. And he is going to make it horrible on human beings in that great tribulation. If you're not saved today, if you listen and you're not saved, don't be worried about being ashamed of trusting Jesus Christ in front of your friends and family. Because the alternative is, you're going to have Satan down here on earth with you. God loves you. Christ died for you. Satan don't love you. He hates you. He wants to kill every. Why do you think he can have him strap on something? He, he, he kills the, 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 the deceived person and takes a bunch of people with him. Four Americans died over in the Brussels airport. That's what he does. They're so evil, they hold on to a, call a dead man switch. So if they get shot up by the police, they can just release them. Boom! This is, this is crazy. That's satanic. Take you out with them, see? So if you're lost today or your relative's lost, they're going to have hell on earth one day. Satan, he ain't going to just be pulling the strings from the heavenly places. He himself is going to be right here. He's going to say, woe unto the earth. We're going to see that in Revelation 12, okay? All right, look at uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, verse number uh, 7. 1 verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Let's say there is some, some, some nuclear warfare. Coming out, of, coming out of the midst of that will be the Lord Jesus. You'll see him. I mean, it's going to be fantastic for us to watch. We'll be watching from the heavens. All of heaven is going to just cease while the Lord does his thing. We're going to watch our, our dear Lord fulfill his mighty scriptures, right? All right, go with me to Revelation. Go to, uh, we're going to go to Revelation 19, but go to chapter 12 first. Go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter number 12. Look at verse 7. Revelation 12, verse 7. Revelation 12, 7. And there was war in heaven. Now notice where the war is. It's in heaven. Okay? Keep your hand there. Let's look at a couple of verses. Um, keep, your, keep, your, keep your place there. Reason it's in heaven. Go with me, if you will. Ephesians chapter number 2. Go with Ephesians chapter 2. See what our Apostle Paul says about this. Ephesians chapter number 2. <clears throat> Satan has many little names that the Bible gives him. That old dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan. Calls him the God of this world in 2 Corinthians. Notice what he calls him here. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened, speaking of us Gentiles who were lost. God made us alive in Christ. Who were dead, although we were walking around living in our human flesh, we were dead before God in what? Trespasses and sins. We were separated from God in trespasses and sins. Verse 2, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. Before we got saved, and I pray that's the issue. I know that's the issue here. I pray that that's the truth, that it was before we got saved only, that we walked according to the course of this world. Satan has set up a course for this world. He's the God of this world. Little g. The world is set up the way Satan wants it, okay? The foundations are built by God in righteousness, but Satan is trying to suppress that. Once that one day when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and puts Satan and his angels in the bottomless pit for a thousand years, the world will run the way God made it for run, righteously. Listen, watch what he says. Verse 2, we're in a time past you walked according to the course of this world. What's that? According or in line with the prince of the power of the air. That's mm -hmm. Satan. And he is the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. All these lost people are mightily influenced by Satan. 
The reason why lost people irk you all the time, maybe they don't, they do me, is because Satan runs them. And Satan is our enemy. He's against us and we're against him. But don't get mad at them. Go to chapter 6. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. You need to love them the way God does. God, God loves these heathen. It takes the grace of God to love a bunch of Christ-rejected heathen, doesn't it? Sure it does. You want to bust them in the head, that's what you want to do, at least I do. Because yeah, I'm, I'm honest with you, God. Because I hate when they attack our Lord Jesus Christ. I hate that. I hate when they attack our God and mock our God. And be not see, God is not mocked. He's been gracious for a while, but one day his grace will be removed and he's going to judge and make war. We're going to see that. But look, we don't get mad at these lost heathen. Notice what he says here. Verse number 12, Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, mankind, flesh and blood is not the issue. Don't be out there rioting, unruly, and hurting people. Paul says don't be brawling, but be gentle to those in meekness dealing with them. But I know, if you're honest, you want to, you know, but we don't do that because we show the grace of God. Notice, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. There's some rulers behind these guys. They're just puppets for the puppet master. Against, against spiritual wickedness where? In high, In high places. places. Satan is running this, people. Go to Job chapter 1. Go all the way back to the Old Testament to Job. Find Psalms and all that, you'll be right there with Job. You get to Proverbs, all that, and Job is right there before. Go to Job chapter 1. If, you, if you're prone to depression, <coughs> don't read the book of Job. No, I'm just kidding. Don't read it as God's word. But it'll depress you, man. Because Job was a righteous man. Now, he, he's a type of a little flock, okay? There's, he's in his Bible. What he went through... Is to, is, to, is to give, James chapter 5 says, look at the patience of Job, is to give instruction and encouragement to the little flock in the future. And it also teaches you that you have no business telling God how to yep. do what he does. That's the second thing, right. Don't question God. You'd be like this, no matter what you think, you're right, Father, I'm wrong. Because if he, if he really laid it out, if he asked you questions about what he's doing, you, couldn't, you could not answer one of a hundred. That's what Job... It's teaching Job and the rest of us, you know, in general, is we're, we're, not, we're not able in and of our little human selves to even question anything God does. You trust him because he's infinitely more wise than you. And everything he does, he's meticulous, he has a purpose, a wisdom in it. But let me show you about Job. Not so much Job, about Satan. If you look at Job, verse uh, 1, verse 6, everybody got it? I see you still going. Uh, chapter, Brenda, chapter 1, verse 6. Chapter 1, verse 6, yes. What did I say? 6, verse 1? You said verse, uh, verse 1, verse 6. <laughs> I, I have my eye over there with Brenda there. Oh, sorry. I got it. That's all right. We hardly get over it. It's, it's kind of stuck in between there. Okay. Job chapter 1, verse 6. In Job 1, verse 6. Now there was a day. When the sons of God, those are the angels, the direct creation of God, the sons of God, came to, now notice this word, present themselves. It was a kind of a, a board meeting where they're held accountable for what's going on, that God gave them jobs and so forth, to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Now in this heavenly council, this governmental meeting, I'm not going to go into details, you guys can read it, but to give you a little more context, go to chapter 2, verse 1. Job chapter 2, verse 1, because he goes on, and, and, and God himself asked Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Right in Satan's territory, right in the Middle East, was a righteous man who stood for God's principles. Notice here, uh, Job chapter 2, verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God, see they do this periodically. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now watch this, everybody. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. There's some things going on. As, until the body of Christ gets up there, God hasn't taken no position, that power away from Satan and his angels. Now one day he will. 
When the body of Christ is up there, we're going to see in Revelation 12 when we get back there, now we'll be able to, to fill that and, and kick them out. But God is so righteous until he has, a, he, he has to do everything decently and in order. Okay? But you see, he can present himself before the Lord. By the way, this issue, uh, what he was doing there with Job, let me show you something. Go to, go to Luke 22. Go to chap Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter number 22. I'm going to show you something. There was, a, there was something weird, I guess weird on it, for looking at it from ourselves, about uh, what the Lord says to Peter. Luke chapter number 22. Verse 31. For context, look it up. Verse 24. I'm just going to read verse 24. Luke 22, verse 24. Luke 22, 24. And there was also a strife among them. These are his apostles. Which of them should be accounted the greatest? Imagine that. They're thinking about the kingdom. They're like, who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to have the... And the Lord's like, what are y'all doing? The greatest is the one who's going to be the servant of all. If you want to be great to God, I can tell you right now, the same principle applies today. Be the best servant of the Lord you can be. Serve him by serving his saints. He's kind of giving you a glimpse of where, how he sees you and, and where he's going to, what he's going to do with you in his heavenly kingdom. It is based upon how are you serving his saints today in the body of Christ. And if you're not serving his saints today, don't think you're going to do much service up there. He's, he says, he that is greatest among you is the servant of all. When the Lord Jesus Christ got on his feet, his knees, and washed people's feet, he was trying to show them, humble yourself and serve your brethren. That's what exalts you. That's what he says. Well, let's look at this. Verse 25. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. By the way, this is interdispensational. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. As far as uh, he's the, the, hum, the younger was humbled, in, uh, was humbled in that culture. And he that is chief as he that doth serve. If you want to be the, the, the chief, be the best servant. Yeah. Now in verse 31, right out of this context, because I can tell you something, Peter was, was in line to be the head apostle. So let me show you what Satan did. Verse 31. The Lord said, Simon, Simon. Now, when I see him, do this. About the first coming, second coming, okay? Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Now, what is he saying there? What is he saying there? Satan hath desired to have you. Well, what, what is he talking about? Here's what he's talking about. Satan went before God and says, look, that Peter, he, he, he's supposed to be special. He, he's the, he's, he got the keys to the kingdom, right? Let me, let me tempt him. Let me test him out. Yeah. If you're going to be great, Satan's going to constantly try to tempt and test you. And you endure with the word of God, with faith, just like the Lord Jesus that's what he's saying. Look at verse 31. And the Lord said unto Simon, Simon, Behold, Satan hath desired to have you. God revealed that to the Lord Jesus that, you know what's going on up here? Satan wants to get to Peter. And the closer you get to truth, the more Satan wants to get you. Do you think, that, do you think that you could be talking about the little flock as well as Peter? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Obviously, Simon's the head of That's right. Mm -hmm. you, you, the you there is, is the, the, the little flock. The, no. I think it's more probably the, the, that inner circle right. or the apostles. Whereas the thy goes exactly. straight to Peter alone, right? That's true. And, and Peter, I should have, I should have reminded, the Simon, Simon Peter, he's the head of the, he not only the head of that little uh, inner circle, Peter, James, and John, of the apostles, mm -hmm. okay? Particularly those who are going to have some, in context, it's his 12 wondering who's going to be. So it's the entirety of them. But notice he says that he may sift you as wheat. That's the, he, he wants to test those guys who are the closest to the Lord. Uh, we, get, we get emails a lot from uh, uh, denominational uh, missionaries all the time. They say, hey, we're coming through California, can we come? And then, I used to do that when we were over there. I don't do that no more. You, we, you need to be teaching people the mystery, okay, the gospel of grace. Well, we just got one in the mail, uh, in the email, just this week. By the way, we got an we got a, a email from a guy in India. He said, man, I've been learning 
write the vision through your ministry? He goes, we don't have this over here. At least we don't know. It's, uh, anyway, he says, can we send you questions? And once a week, for those people around the world like me, left questions, can you just do a video to answer the question? I said, that's something thing I got to talk to Ryan because he has to we, video and do it. But that might be a good thing. So we got people over there. Um, well, this missionary, he says to, to, to us, he says, look, we're called to California because it, of all the, the, the they call them unchurched places in America, the top four, I'm going to tell you all the top four cities that this guy told. He did, this is his research. He's a denominational missionary. He said the top four cities of unchurched, which means spiritual darkness, is this, in this order. San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, and Sacramento. What they all got in common? They all right up here. San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, and Sacramento. Sacramento is the capital where the stronghold. You know why we can't really get a head wave like we did back in the Midwest? And Chris and I felt this spiritual darkness when we moved here. It's because, the, 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 it basically let me translate it. The top places where Satan and his angels and his devils have a stronghold in the United States of America is right here in our area. Boom. From the bay over here. I told Chris, that that's why I'm here. Because you need somebody going to give the truth of the gospel grace of God at these last days. When, I, when, when we read that, I go, it's no, it's no surprise to me. I didn't do the research like that. I could, I could tell in my spirit. The sensitive, but to, look, look what I'm talking about. San Francisco, Oakland, east, east and west side of the bay. San Jose, and Sacramento. And Sacramento is the capital. Satan uses the capital. So I want you guys to know, if you're listening right now today, you have a few people who, who Satan hasn't deceived. He's keeping... The moment you get this message in this area, my point is, he's going to do everything he can with all his resources to get you to not be here and not get it. We're, we're in some rough territory. Other than Oakland, all those cities have Catholic names, too. Oh, that's right, see? Same. Same. That's right, that's right. San Jose... Yeah. I called it San Fran the other day. Ryan said, you say San Fran, people know you ain't from here. <laughs> he says, nobody from San Fran calls it San Fran. <laughs> Just like uh, Chi -town. nobody from Chicago calls it Chi Town, or definitely Chi Town, or Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. You know? I, I was just talking about Wade from last week, and Ryan was like, yeah, you said San Fran, people know you ain't from here. I go, no, I'm not. <laughs> but I get it. In Chicago, nobody calls it Chi Town. If somebody calls it Chi Town, you know they, they, they ain't from Chicago. I said, well, what do they call it? He said, like, they'll say the city or the bay. I don't know. Anyway, but can I tell you something? That's what's going on. And I'm telling you, that hasn't ceased in the dispensation of grace. I can tell that when people hear this truth, Satan then, in this area, if, you, if you're hearing it in this area, the top, one of the top four areas, Oakland, San Francisco, San Jose, and Sacramento, then Satan, his stronghold is so strong, the fact you guys are even here today is a testament to the grace of God. It matters. We, we're... We're like on the front lines in all of America, which is the last bastion of freedom for the gospel of grace. We're just like soldiers on the front line, and I'm your General Lee. I'm like General you know, Eisenhower or something. Okay, we, We're going to fight. We're going to stand. But one day this battle's going to be over soon. But that's what he said. That little flock, uh, Peter has the head, and then the little flock, uh, the, 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 the 12, I mean, that's the focus in the chapter, Luke verse 31. The Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may... So he's saying it, he speaks to Peter because he's the head, but he's talking about the, the twelve. Uh, they may sift you as wheat, because if they're going to leave, Satan wants to get them, like he did Job. Now watch what, Paul, watch what uh, the Lord says. But I have prayed for thee, because Peter's going to leave him, now that's directly Peter, that thy faith fell not. Now why would he say to Peter, I pray for thee? Because Peter is going to be looked at by the others as their leader. Mm -hmm. If I just decide, oh, I'm, I'm done with this nonsense, I'm going to stay home, I'm tired, it's Wednesday, I'm tired, it's Sunday, whatever. I'm going I'm to go to Disneyland with my family, whatever. If I just gave up, it doesn't mean you guys have to give up, but it'll be, it'll be a blow to your confidence. Say, wait, Brother Ron, you done? Yep. It will, it, will, it will be deflating to you. They said that they purposely take off ISIS leaders. 
They want to take their number one, their number two. They're saying they're doing that because if they, they know these people from the Middle East. If you, if you strike the shepherd, then the sheep will scatter, right? That's why of all the twelve, Satan is going to focus more on Peter than all of them. That's why our, our, our U.S. forces are taking out the ISIS number one, number two. They want to get the head of the snake to make the others scatter because they lose. If I, if I just gave up, you guys, y'all still going to believe it, but we won't have the same organization. See what I'm saying? That's what's going on there. Now, the Lord is going to have to come and fix this stuff on the earth. Let me show you something. Now, we can slow it down. I could go and talk to the president and national security people all around the world. Just put them all in the room. I'm going to show them how to deal with them from the word. We can slow that tide like the body of Christ is holding off everything. I can give them wisdom from God's word to hold off terrorism for a while. But it's not going to be dealt with entirely until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Go to Revelation. Is there a connection with Peter having the keys too? Uh, yes, yes. By this time, well, that was Luke. By this time, I believe he had that, that same um, uh, um, incident with the Lord where he mm -hmm. handed them to the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. In other words, Peter is the head apostle of the twelve. All right, go over back to Revelation 12, and then we'll get to Revelation 19. Go to Revelation 12. Revelation 12. So the stage is being set, guys. What we see happening with the terrorism and so forth, all this stuff in the middle of the day, Matthew, um, it's the stage being set for what's going to go on in the future. All right, Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought. Now, Michael is the, the general of the heavenly armies. Armies. Michael and his angels fought. Oh, Richard, you asked a question last week, right? Yeah. About how they fought. You know, it's kind of... Ultimately, you can't kill an, an angel. Not the way we know death, right? Yeah. Ultimately, what's going to happen is they're going to be thrown into the lake of... Uh, well, ultimately. When the Lord returns, Michael and his angels are going to be pushing them back Eventually, they're going to be put in the bottomless pit for a thousand years, right? Mm -hmm. When Satan's let out, obviously his henchmen are going to be let out. They're going to be able to do some things, gather an army, and then God the Father is just going to blow them away, the, the people, and then put Satan, Satan, his angels, all will be put in the lake of fire after their trial, which at the great white throne, which we will be there to judge them, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. That's how he's going to ultimately destroy them. So when they fight, they're, they're just pushing, pushing them out. Yeah, okay. pushing them out. Okay. And we'll see where they're pushing them out of. Okay, right. Look at verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Now watch what I want you to see when I said that territory. Neither was there what? Place found any more where? In heaven. in heaven. See, what they're doing is they're kicking them out. It's a campaign to kick them out of heaven. I, I keep up on this Middle East stuff because it's interesting to me to watch. The physical, I see the spiritual in it. I, I learned today that uh, the Syrian forces captured a, a, a city, Palmyra, that ISIS had, and they got that territory back. See, it's a fight for territory, right? Yeah. That's how this is. So that, I pay attention to that because no, not only is the Middle East where, where I see what the state being set, you can see the spiritual, they kicked them out of that territory, that stronghold, pushed them back, right? That's what's going to be happening in the heavens, heavenly by the way, no more place found for them. Why does Paul call it the heavenly places, right? Mm -hmm. Now watch what he says in verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, way back from Genesis there, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now they go from being these spiritual wickedness in high places to now they're on the earth. That's why I'm saying if, you, if you're left behind in that day or your family and friends, Satan now is just kind of working back and forth. But now he has no other recourse but to focus right here on the earth. So if you're li think about this. If you're living on the earth, Satan's going to be right over there in the Middle East in the, in the Antichrist, and his angels are going to be all around. They're going to be all on this earth. I can find. It's going to be hell on earth, guys. You don't want to be left behind. Let your, let your lost person see this video. Because this is what they are. They, they worried about whether this guy gets the president's back. Don't worry about them. Worry about Satan. <laughs> you worry about a human being. Worry about Satan. They worry he about go, Donald Trump. I know. Everybody. <laughs> hey, look. He's crazy. But look, y'all, you're going to have Satan incarnate on this world, man. You got to get saved right now. Look, let me show you something. Let me show you something. 
verse number, uh, verse number 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. You see that issue of accusing them? See, they be going, he's going to do that stuff, man. Now watch this. Verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now this is the prophetic saying. And they loved not their lives unto death. They're going to be martyred. Many of those uh, believers, uh, Christ was their Messiah in the future, will be beheaded. Uh, ISIS, they know that. That's why they feel it. They want to do that to bring apocalypse and all this stuff. They know what they're doing. They don't know the Bible. They know what they're doing. Listen, verse 12. Now, now watch. When, when the heavens are cleaned from Satan, look at verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens. Now, don't miss this. And ye that dwell in them. Yes. You know who that is, too? It includes the body of Christ, us. We're going to be there. We're going to be rejoicing like this verse said. We're going to look at each other and go, that's the verse. <laughs> but what about your heathen family and friends that are down here? Look, look at this. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you. See, people think he's down here now, you know, he, he can go back and forth, but his primary influence is in the heavenly places today. But one day, Christ is going to kick him out of there about the halfway point, and he's going to spend time down here causing havoc. Look at it. Woe unto the heavens of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great what? He's not coming down to eat with you and have fun. He's coming down with great... By the way, he already hates humanity. He mad. He, he, this is about the world. Man, I, I can't even put it in words. Having great wrath. Why? Because he knoweth that he hath but the short time. Let me, let, me, let me give you a little something that I see at the end of our dispensation. There's a similar principle that's going on. Satan's been doing all he can to hide the mystery, right? He's working real hard. He knows that this dispensation of grace is about to come to an end. He knows. He can see. He can see the preparation from the Lord coming up there in heaven. So his attack is, man, it's at its most fiery right now trying to keep this hit and, and try and for those of us who believe this message try to get you not to believe and not to be not to get your full reward you know what he's operating if you if you're a believer in the body of christ he want to make sure you don't know the mystery and you're not faithful in it so you don't get a reward he's fighting that right now because he knows this thing is almost over just kind of on the side now go down to uh um, oh okay we saw that so he's going to be down here on earth now go to chapter 19 revelation 19 if you will Remember, the Lord's going to come and avenge and fight. Look at Revelation 19, verse 11. When Paul says, Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, notice in verse 11, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. That white horse represents... Uh, um, the, the, good, the good guy, as it were, the righteousness of the prince and so forth. Um, notice it says, and he that sat upon him was called, what? Faithful and true. You know, that's the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in righteousness. Now, once you get this, in righteousness he does what? Yeah. Judge and make war. That's the opposite of grace and peace, right? Mm -hmm. God's grace is now extended to the world. He's not judging the world. He's not at war with the world. He's at peace with the world today. But when the dispensation of grace is over, God's time of grace and peace is done. Paul's proclamation from God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. And now God is going to judge and make war. By the way, he does it in righteousness. It's the right thing to do, ain't it? Is it not the right thing for the Lord to come down here and right all these wrongs of these heathen that run? It's not just, I mean, our leaders are evil. They, 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 they frame iniquity by a law. They make laws that go against God's righteousness. And Jesus Christ will come and fix that. Like what he says here. Verse number 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many what? Crowns. He's the king of kings. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Some, some think it was his represents his blood. But Isaiah says, over there in Isaiah, it says when he comes back, he's going to 
He's going to, they, they look at him and say, why are your clothes all stained like you got wine spots off? He says, I was, I was treading the wine press of my wrath. Okay? He's going to be a warrior, man. He's going to be how David was. See, David prescluded Solomon, right? David was the bloody man, the man of war. Solomon was the man of peace. That's a type of Christ in his return. See, when the Bible looks at the kingdom, it looks at the wrath, then the kingdom. So David was a type of God's wrath, you know, just... David was a mighty warrior. Saul has killed his thousand, David has killed a thousand. Then his son Solomon comes and brings 40 years of peace. Well, Jesus Christ will come as the bloody, the bloody warrior, but then he will take his rightful throne as the king of all the earth. Now watch this. Notice it says, verse 13, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That's his name. Before he became Jesus, Jesus is his human name. He was called the Word of God. Verse 4, And the armies which were in heaven, that's Michael, followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, that represents righteousness and so forth. Now remember that the spirit of his mouth, notice this, verse 15, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp what? Sword. Now think about it. Out of his mouth a sharp sword. But you know what that sword is? That sword of the spirit, which is the Word of God. That's right. His word is powerful, man. Watch this. And with it, with his mighty word, that sword of the spirit, he shall smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a what? Rod of iron. That's that law. He's going to rule them with a rod. He's not going to be politically correct, guys. You know what political correctness gets you? Blown up in an airport. That's what it gets you. Israel don't have that happen because they ain't political. They will, they will profile you, watch you, x-ray your car coming down the road. Can I tell y'all the stupidest thing I ever heard? Over in Brussels, they got a law that the police, they should learn from the Chicago Police Department in the hood. They got a law that the police can't raid a home if they expect to, if they, if they, uh, if they believe terrorists are there. Their law says you can't raid the home between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. or something crazy. <laughs> and you know the neighbors were saying these dudes was in the middle of the night in the garage putting their bombs. They go, the, they, the police tell you, okay, we want you terrorists to get your beauty sleep, okay? We'll come in the morning. The best time to raid a home is in the middle of the night while they sleep. They can't be ready to shoot you. In. They're stupid. That's what political right, not when the Lord is here. He won't be playing no games. A rod of iron, man. <clears throat> and he treadeth, verse 15, the wine press of the fierceness. By the way, everybody think Jesus is just this real soft meek And that he is, when, yes. depending on how you come to him. Mm -hmm. But if you come to man and in pride, he calls you a he's thou fools. Right? Look, man, he's hard. God has fierceness and wrath, too, mm -hmm. of the Almighty God. Verse 16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and what? Lord, Lord of Lords. A good place then would be, go over to, um, go over to uh, 1 Timothy 6. Get 1 Timothy 6 and then get uh, 2 Thessalonians 2. We're going to look at 2 Thessalonians first, okay? So 1 Timothy and 2 Thessalonians, they're one book apart. 1 Timothy 6. And 2 Thessalonians 2. Now, next week, we're going to see part 2. Let's end in 2 Thessalonians 2. Look at verse 8 and 9. Uh, this is the word of Satan. We're going to look at part 2 because I want, I want to get more into this right here, okay? And what it's going to do in that day, how it's going to lead people astray. God's going to give them what they want. They don't want the truth, so God's going to give them a lie. Let me read that for you. Verse 8. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. We just saw that in Revelation and so forth. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. We'll get more into that next week. With all power and signs and lying wonders. Now look at verse 10. With all deceivableness, God's going to give him power to deceive. Yeah, and God's going to give him, he's going to give him all power. He's going to say, you got free reign. Because right now, the body of Christ and the truth of it is holding back the power of Satan, okay? 
But when righteous, when that, when we out of here, man, it's just gonna be all hell's gonna break loose. He says, with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivable and of unrighteousness and them that what perish. That means they're gonna go to hell, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Does God want them to get saved? Yes. Do they want to get saved? No. Well, verse eleven. And for this cause, God, who God shall send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. Why? That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. We're going to see that next week. Now, let's a good place to end. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. This is our hope, man. Don't worry about the political stuff that's going on now. Mike Dicker, the coach of the Bears, said when they lost, this too shall pass. <laughs> I remember that as a little boy. I didn't even know what that meant. Basically he's saying, hey, I ain't getting all upset over one loss. We'll come back. They won the Super Bowl. Whatever. That was 85 there. But watch this. So when you look at the world, the terrorism, the crazy political system, especially in our country, all that stuff, you say, what in the world is going on? Well, just what the Bible says. It's getting worse and worse. It's setting up for the Antichrist. But one day, the Lord Jesus Christ will not only come back and take us out, but then in a few sh short years after, will rule, come back and rule and reign on this earth. Let me show you that. As Paul gives Timothy charge, we're going to be looking at 1 Timothy uh, soon. Verse number 13. 1 Timothy 6, 13. I give thee charge in the sight of God. Who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate, witnessed a good confession. He says the same way the Lord stood before Pontius, that evil Roman authority, and when he was under that, under that persecution, he stood strong. Verse 14, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's the appearing for the rapture. Verse 15, which in his, now notice he says, times. He has the times for the heavenly places and then the times for the earth. Dispensation of the It's a dispensation of things. That's sir. right. Which in his times he shall show. He's going to manifest it. Who is the blessed and what? Only. He's the all powerful one. Potentate means power. Potent. The king of kings and the lord of lords. Who, who only have the immortality. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach into. That's that original light he even put in, in creation. Let there be light. Even before the sun, his light shone. Which no man can approach unto whom no man hath seen nor can see. That's him in his full manifestation of his glory. To whom be honor and power. That's, what, that's it, power everlasting. And the saints say, amen. Because he's God Almighty. If you're listening today and you don't know the joy of knowing this great and wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, don't waste another day. We've seen from Scripture what the world is heading to. That great noble, great and terrible day of the Lord where Satan himself will be your ruler. You don't want that. He's your puppet master now if, you, if you're lost. But one day he's going to rule over everything for a time. You don't want to be on this earth. Woe unto the earth. But you don't have to be here. You can go with the body of Christ. Today, you just trust the shed blood of Christ, what he did at Calvary. God will save you like that. And then, the, when we do go, the judgment seat of Christ is there, so don't waste your time with nothing else but learning, growing, doing the work of faith, getting this information. That's why we're here. You need to serve the Lord by serving saints. Only you and God know what you're doing. If you're not serving the Lord in the mystery, get busy because that's your destiny is, to, is, is at the judgment seat of Christ. That's between you and the Lord. I'm going to do my part to help you, but I'm going to stand before the Lord of my own merits, and so will you. I'll do my best to help. We'll do our best to help. Okay? You've got to be a part of what we're doing and get it out to others. Play that part. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and life of him. We thank you that we can get into your precious word, Lord, and especially us who have a, a those of like precious faith. Um, we know, we know that the territory that we live in here in this particular part of California, from the Bay Area over uh, Oakland, San Francisco, San Jose, 
in Sacramento, which is the capital, the strongest of the strongholds. We know we're battling like really no other saints in, in, in this country against the policy of evil and the lie program. And Satan's wiles to deceive us and to, in, dis, to discourage us for finishing our race and our course. So, Father, we need one another in, in our prayers and support more than ever. I thank you for these saints because if this is the front line of the spiritual battle, probably even on earth, because America leads in these things, the freedom to get the truth out. Wow, we're, we're boy, we're this is a this is a, a a huge job, Father, to do that in this territory with these strongholds. But we know by your marvelous grace that we have faith in your word and by your spirit, we can we can be more than conquerors. We can love us. We can endure. So, Father, give us strength for the fight. But on the other hand, we look for, for the soon return of your Son, the Lord Jesus, to, to take us to you, Father, to bring us home to you. But until then, may we redeem the time in Christ's name.